have made, God. Oh, God, we have chosen to rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, we ask, God, as you prepare our minds and our hearts, God, to hear what you are saying today, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, we ask that you have your way, God, in the name of Jesus, God. As I decrease, God, that you increase, God, that your word will go forth, God. That someone will be saved today. Someone will be healed today. Someone will be delivered and set free, God, just because of your word, God, that have gone forth, God. Father, I ask that you continue to bless our pastor first, that you're over overseeing our forever first lady, God, all the members of this body of Christ, God. Oh, God, continue to have your way, God. Move by your spirit, God. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your Holy Spirit. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And as you have your seat, let's just give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to the of the world. Thou hast well said, I have no husband. 
For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in the mountain, in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men are to worship. Amen. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what we know, what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, that the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I am that. Speak unto thee and he. Mm -hmm. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into a city and said unto the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye, that ye know not of. Therefore, say the disciples, one to another, Hath any man brought him or to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, that ye are not four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And therein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that therein ye bestowed no labor, other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him, for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. Mm. Praise God for his word. And I just felt it necessary to just read the whole story, the account of Jesus. And with the, you know, we know it's a familiar passage. Um, the woman at the well. Mm. And in Hebrew, the name Samaria means watch mountain. And that area was hilly. And in 1 Kings 16 and 24, I'm not going to go there, but Samaria was both a region and a city that experienced many changes. Thank you, Jesus. And the reason that Jesus went to Samaria, because to go a different route to get to the, go through, he had to go through Samaria because another way was too far away and during that time, he would have had to go out of his way to accomplish to get there. So that was one of the reasons he went there, but he also went there because the Holy Spirit knew that he was going to meet this woman at the well. The Lord knew that, God, that Jesus would meet the woman at the well. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And that's why Jesus had came to us. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying not to go ahead of myself because I'm a little excited knowing, hallelujah, that same Jesus that met the woman at the well is the same Jesus that met us one day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And see what it was, hallelujah. It was uncustomary for the Jews to be with the Samarians. And, and, and actually, she was looked upon as being unclean. And this was something. They had no dealings with one another. So for someone else to see them together, it was like, oh, wow, that's like a disgrace. <laughs> Jesus. But I'm going to go on because this is a long chapter. And I do want y'all to get out at least by three. Thank you, Jesus. Because I told y'all I have scriptures. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I just want to read. I want to go on down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we know, like I said, we know the story. 
of Jesus and the woman at the well. But we'll go down to the 10th verse. And this is in the Passion Translation. Jesus replied, if, all, if you only knew who I am and the gift that God wants to give you, you would ask me for a drink and I would give you living water. So if you only knew, if she only knew who he was, that, that, that she, when, she, when he asked her for a drink, she would ask him. And he would have gave her that living water, that Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. The woman replied, but sir, you don't even have a bucket. And the wells is very deep. So where do you find this living water? So now she's curious. She wants to know, where can I find this water? Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus says, and I'll go down to the 13th verse, if you drink from Jacob's well, you will be thirsty again. But if anyone drinks the living water I give them, they will never be thirsty again. For when you drink the water I give you, it becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit, flooding you with endless life. So we thank and praise God that the, the water that Jesus is going to give us, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. When we get saved, hallelujah, we need to desire the fullness of the Lord. We need to desire to, the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is what's keeping us. And this is what the Lord wanted to give her. He didn't just want to, he didn't just want to get her to, to understand the natural water, but he wanted her to understand the spiritual water. Because Jesus came for salvation. He came to save those that were lost. So it didn't matter who she was. He already knew about her life. Amen. He already knew who she was. And that's the kind of God we serve. He knows about our lives. He knows that we're the words of with wretch undone. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Hallelujah. But Jesus knew who she was. He knew who we were. Thank you, Jesus. But he didn't count us out. Too. Thank you, Jesus. So the gift of the living water is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And verse 19 says, the woman changed the subject. After he talked about her sin. After he talked about her. Hallelujah. Her having five husbands and she was shacking up now with one that wasn't hers. <laughs> Hallelujah. She began, and this is the this is the passion translation said, the woman changed the subject. And she said, You must be a prophet. And see, thank you, Jesus. When the Lord sends us to witness the people, we don't have to brown beat them, we don't have to beat them over the head with they sent. Because we've all sinned. <laughs> hallelujah. All we got to do, hallelujah, is tell them what Jesus said. <laughs> and I believe in that very moment, in that very hour, Jesus is going to give us what to say to those people we come upon. And this is what was going on here. He didn't beat her down. <laughs> hallelujah. Was saying that, well, you, you had five husbands and you got to do this and you got to do that. <laughs> hallelujah. When we come to Jesus, all we got to do is ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins. Ask him to come into our lives and save us. And the same way he saved us, he's going to save somebody else. It just drives me crazy, huh? Jesus, how people try to make it so difficult for others to see Jesus because we're in the way. And we got to move out the way and allow them to see the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Lord will give us what to say in that very time and that very hour. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to go down a little further. And I, I just need to go through this. Thank you, Jesus, to get to my point. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to go down to the 21st verse. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. So we talked about at the very beginning, Samaria represented Watch Mountain. But God is letting her know. Jesus is letting her know. It doesn't matter what mountain you want. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can worship God. You don't have to be on the east. You don't have to be on the west. You don't have to be in the north and the south. You can worship Jesus wherever you are. You don't have to be in a certain church. You don't have to be in a certain place. You don't even have to be in church to worship God. Because see, God is the spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. You can worship him in your home. You can worship him in the car. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. Worship. Hallelujah. It's not only just lifting up our hands and praying. We can worship by our kindness that we show one to another. Amen. Jesus was moved with compassion. Because he was moved with compassion. Thank you, Jesus. He had compassion on the lady at the well. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. In verse 21, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel my heart coming on because I didn't feel well this morning. But I thank you, praise God, for his Holy Spirit. Then my kids was to see this. And if I was to tell them I was dragging this morning, they would speak the word back to me. I used to tell my kids as they went, they were healed. Hallelujah, God. Go show yourself unto the priest. And I believe as I got here, the Lord was to sit his healing upon my body this morning, God. Hallelujah. Because I would always tell them as to me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. So no matter who's sick, we're going to church. We're going to go serve the Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. See, we got to come together. Hallelujah. The fellowship. Hallelujah. We worship. So we can go out and evangelize. And then we get discipleship. It's on the wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory, God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to go down to verse 29. And she said, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? So after, hallelujah, she talked with Jesus at the well. He told, she went out and she told the others. She left the water pot and she went into the city. And she said, come see a man that told me all things that I did. Is this not to Christ? Hallelujah. And we know that some won't believe lest they they won't receive it lest they believe. Hallelujah. You know, back in Exodus, it was Moses that had the rod. And when he threw down the rod, hallelujah, it became a serpent. And he grabbed it by the tail, and when he picked it up, hallelujah, it became a rod again. And he did that so they would believe. Hallelujah. That's why he did that. And that's what God wants us to do. We want us to show. Come and see. Show these people. Show them what God has done. Hallelujah. Let them see. See, let they see signs of wonder. They're not going to believe. But don't discount them. Because they want to see signs of wonder. Let them know that God is doing signs of wonder in the body of Christ. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And as she went about, hallelujah, in the meantime, here come the disciples. You know, sometimes people want to come. They go and whisper. They try to discourage you. They will try to tell you, it don't take all that. Why do you have to go to church? Why do you have to go here? I had a friend told me, see how you go and telling everybody about Jesus at work? I don't do all that. Okay, that's you. Amen. Okay. But we're to be fishers of men. Amen. We're to win souls. And and, and, and and when people don't have an understanding of the revelation, I'm not going to work for the scriptures. It's the life I live. It's the compassion. It's the love. It says by his love, he drew us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Whoever believeth on him is not condemned, but if you choose not to believe, then you're condemned because you choose not to believe. But we gotta go in love, letting him know that's how God came to us, he loved us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But he went on and said, in the 34th verse, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So God had a came. Jesus had a plan. That plan was salvation. And we, while we're here, we have to finish the work that God called us to. As I hear pastors say, we're not sitting, waiting to be raptured and go to heaven. But we got work to do while we're yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are souls that are dying, that are crying. There are people that don't even know about Jesus. I, I forgot what the statistics was on how many people have never heard of Jesus. And then how many people have heard of Jesus and rejected Jesus. Lord. That doesn't mean we don't go to them. Lord, no. Now the word says if they don't receive us, we shake the dust off our feet. That's right. But somebody plant a seed. Somebody water. But it's God that's going to give the increase. They may act like they don't hear you. But that's okay. Keep going after those souls. 
It's, it's just sad that so many people don't know about Jesus. We got to we gotta come out of where we are. We got to come out of the comfort of the church. Yeah, we're in service. We're praising God, but we got to go out. He, he commissioned, go ye therefore in the name of Jesus. We're not going in our name. We're going in Jesus' name. Amen. When you go in Jesus' name, he's with you. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know where I'm supposed to be, but glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. The 35th verse. Say not ye that yet four months and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white and all ready for harvest. So I looked up the word harvest. And in the Strong's, it says, limb of a tree. Yes, yes. And the Hebrew, a red, I'm gonna say it right, a Ramic dictionary, harvest is as reaped the crop, the time, the reapeth, also a limb of a tree. Simple, foolish, branch, harvest. And then after that, it says man. Yes, yes. So, in the Britannica, the season when crops are gathered from the fields are the activity of gathering crops. The beginning of the harvest varies from year to year. And Webster simply says, to gather. So when I look at, when you think about harvest as being the limb of a tree, yes. I took a look at a tree. And when we start out with a tree, a tree begins with the roots. Mm -hmm. And the function of the root is that it absorbs the water, nutrition, and also anchors so it don't fall. That's right. mm -hmm. yeah. So our soul ha, has to be anchored where we don't fall. Glory. Glory. Then the Glory. trunk. Glory. The trunk protects the living tissue. <laughs> and what the trunk reminded me of was the father. Because yeah, our father protects right. us. Right. However, the limb may take the role of the trunk. So that sounds like <laughs> we have to take the role of the father. Yeah. Whatever the father did, we do. We do what we see him do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus did what he see his father do. We got to do what we see Jesus do. Oh, yeah. Wherever Jesus went, if Jesus went to the hedges and the highways, we got to go to the hedges and the highways. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. He went to the other bus and the gun bus. It did not matter. He went to the woman with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He went to the blind. Thank you, Jesus. He said, greater works. 
much will we do in the last days. Thank you, Jesus. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them. We got to be moved with compassion. When we see these children out there on the streets acting up, we got to be moved with compassion. If really, nobody knows what a person's been through. Uh, and it's not just because the people I work through, but there's so much trauma. There's so much trauma of going on in the lives of the children today, yeah. of what they have experienced, of what they have been through. So don't always say that's a bad child, that's a disrespectful child. Yeah, that part might be true. Mm -hmm. But somebody didn't tell them about Jesus. Why can't we be the one? Amen. There are kids that may seem rough and tough. I was in a... Um, I was in a Walgreens up at Gordon Huntington Park one day. And it was a group of kids. And they was cussing and fussing and carrying on this and other. And that's why I think I let the Holy Spirit lead you. Because you don't always have to say, you ain't got to tell them to stop watching their mouth. I ain't got to say none of that. I got stuff in my arm. I dropped the box. I tapped the box. I said, can you pick that up, please? And he picked it up, and that started a conversation. And I just had a simple conversation with them. And that's all they need to know, that somebody's acknowledging them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the girls were a little more rallied than the boys. Yeah. And they jumped around and jumped in line. And when the girl jumped, it kind of bumped me. She stopped and she said, oh, excuse me, miss. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just how we approach people will change their reaction. Yes. Yes. We, can't, we can't be reactive. We got to be proactive. Yes. Before they may be... Cursing out somebody else, but before they curse us out, let's let's be proactive. Let's change that situation. Let them know that somebody cares enough to ask them. And I begin to ask them questions about school and different things, and that's what they have to hear. So when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered aboard as sheep having no shepherd. Then said to him to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful. But the labors are few. Now this I found interesting. Yes, yes. So this is Jesus talking. He said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. So what I'm getting from that is Jesus is telling us <laughs> to pray. We got to pray to the Lord of the harvest, is Jesus, mm -hmm. that he will send forth labors into the harvest. Yes. So all we have to do is pray. We, we need to go outside to pray. We ain't got to be in no special place to pray. We can just pray. And then God has given us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said he will lead us, guide us, and direct us in all truth. We have to, we have to, you know, we can't just, we can't continue to be like children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. We need to grow up, put away the pacifiers, get away, get a word rid of the milk. We need to let them know that we serve a God huh, that sits high and look low. My God is strong. My God is mighty. My God is powerful. He's the beginning, the end, the first, the last. My God is all in all. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. See, I serve a God. The word of God says that he's going to supply my every need according to his riches and glory. Stop getting so caught up in what you don't have. He said he's going to supply your every need. He didn't say he's going to give you everything you want, but he will give you the desires of your heart, but you got to seek them. you got to pray for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And if you're doing good already, the word wants us to know, don't grow weary and well do it. Because in due season, you will reap the harvest. If you faint not, don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your grandchildren. Don't give up on your neighbors. Don't give up on your co-workers. Don't give up on the people that you see in the store. What a better opportunity to witness in the supermarket. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. They will know us by our love. The love we have one for another. But guess what? That same love that we show to other people in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, Jeremiah says, the harvest is past. The summer is ending and we're not saved. Oh, the Ross and the We got to get some folks saved. We got to get some folks delivered. Hey, Jesus. Hallelujah to God. But I want to read the next verse, the 10th chapter, the first verse. And when he had called to his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of 
sickness and all men of disease. So guess what? The same power that is given, that they gave the 12 disciples, he gave us. He said, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, all power of enemy, and nothing by no means shall harm you. God has given us power. It used to be a show called the Electric Company. Uh, Pastor John, probably my age. So he remember when they would come on, we're going to turn on the power. Well, that's about how it is with Jesus. He's given us the power. Turn it on. Use it. we got to tap into those things that the Lord gave us. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank you today. We bless him. Hallelujah. But I didn't give you. Uh, I didn't give you a, a thing, but we're going to go back to John for one more minute. Hallelujah to God. And I'm going to tell you what I'm hearing. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And as, mm, so he says, in, in 37th verse, back to the fourth chapter of John, <laughs> and therein is that saying true, one soweth and one reapeth. Mm -hmm. I sent you to reap that when ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and you are entered into their labors. Mm -hmm. And many other Samaritans of the city believed on him. Yeah. For that saying of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, Jesus. If I was to, I don't even have a, a topic, topic, a theme, mm -hmm. but I would just say show and tell. It's show and tell time. We got to show the world, what God is doing. And we got to tell of the goodness of the Lord. I serve a good God. And we cannot, oh God, don't forget. See, God has put us on assignment with some things. I got something going on in my life right now. I can't even tell y'all right now. Oh my God. But it's an assignment from God. It don't make sense to nobody. Nobody's going to understand it. They probably think I'm crazy. But God has put me on assignment. I'm only on assignment to reach that soul. It ain't about nothing else. Even the person that I'm on assignment for, they might think it's about something else. It ain't about nothing else. Yeah. It's about me reaching that soul. Amen. Because sometimes somebody may plant and somebody may water. God is going to get an increase. But sometimes you gotta, you got to get out there to the harvest. Mm. It's, the fields are ripe. It's ripe. There are people that's waiting for someone to just say a convert to them. They're waiting. You know, but we have to be in our place. We got to be in a place that we're able, thank you, Jesus, to minister grace unto the hearers. The word of God says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of thy mouth, but that which is used for edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And I think that's Ephesians 4.29. But we have to minister grace. We cannot be negative. I thank and praise God for the way I raise my children. Now, wherever they go, whatever they do, they're adults. But I can tell you that Dennis, <laughs> he has so much that I've instilled in him. In bad times, he's talking about I'm being positive. No matter what's going on, he stays positive. He don't want no negative around him. And that's how we as the body of Christ, no matter what's going on, Amen. we can't be negative about different things that's going on. We have to show the love of Christ. We have to know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. It really is. We've been made in joy for a night, but I'm going to, we've been home in my private personal space, in my closet, okay? But joy is coming in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to come out and let everybody see how heavy your heart is and what's going on. That's not, because see, the, the world is looking. They're looking at us. Oh, yes. You know, they're looking at our lifestyle. If you're always so sad, or you always so negative, then why do I want Jesus? Mm -hmm. But we got to give them, the, let them know the joy of the Lord is our strength. Ask God to get us to that place. Because it's time now. You know, it's time for the church to come higher. Amen. We've been saying it for years. We can pass this mountain long enough. You know, we have to come higher. The vision's already been written. It's been made plain. It's plain. We just got to walk in it. We got to run in the way that the Lord has called us to be. It's on the wall. We come worship, evangelism, and then discipleship. Let's go get somebody else saved. It's not just me and my four no more. 
we just gonna sit down and we're gonna wait until Jesus comes. No, I want everybody that can go to go. You know, so we got to, we, we, we just gotta be about our father's business. We gotta do the work, but we gotta show them. Show them who Jesus is. Tell them about the goodness of the Lord. Let them see what God is doing. We're not boasting and praying. We testify. We're boasting and praying in the goodness of the Lord. Amen. We're boasting in the Lord that our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, but it's according to the power that worketh in us. Yes. we got to have the power to believe. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but evidence of things not seen. we got to stand in faith no matter what is going on. I believe that my children will be saved, sacrificed, and the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues by that box. Right. I don't believe in nothing else. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they tell me. I don't care what they can say, who, who they serve, whoever. They will serve the Lord my God. My God will be their God. Okay? Abraham started it, and I'm the listener. I'm part of that seed. Okay? I'm part of the seed of David. <laughs> and guess what? Everything that all my descendants before me spoke and had, I have too. Yes. They will be saved. I, and I don't have to beat them over the head. No. Yesterday I'm sitting there. And we're yes. sitting there and I, and I do try to do spend some time with Zion and doing different things. Yes. And we're playing you know. And I just said what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're not going to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> it could have went. But he stopped. Yes. Okay. Keep, okay, let's move. Keep, keep moving. Because we have to. You know, we ain't got to beat them down, but they got to know. And they know by the life we live. You know, and I just, I just encourage everybody today, if anybody under the sound of my voice, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is accept that he is Lord and Savior. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and you will be saved. Hallelujah. So just confess and just receive. It's just that simple. And we thank and praise you today. And when he, when he saved you, then you're going to go out and make disciples. You're going to be that limb. And as that limb grows, you're going to go and bring some more limbs and branches into the kingdom of God. So we thank you today. We thank you, praise you. This is the hour of deliverance. And deliverance is taking the Hallelujah.